Blanks Wrestling Report. Welcome to the Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report. I am the big guy Ryback, joined by Raj Geary Wrestling Inc. We are here. We're, we're doing StreamYard once again, Raj. I don't know. Last week there was a clip where it sounded like there was wrestling going on. There was <laughs> there was somebody. We were talking pro wrestling, and, and it sounded like someone was frivolously, is it frivolously uh, going to town on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't know. Old habits die hard, I guess. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say all accusations were on your end. My hands were able to be seen, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my hands up today. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's uh, StreamYard. I, I mean, we use them for our podcast as well. So I'm not yeah. sure it was the first time. I don't know if any of the audio settings or, or what, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's smoother this week. It was pro- no doubt was my fault, regardless. So <laughs> it was, it was. We switched over on the audio recording because I'd forgot to hit record on the thing. So I have a feeling that was, that was what was behind it. But here we are, round two. Here, here we are, and. and uh, what a crazy week it's been. Uh, there, It just keeps on going. It's been a, a wild week. It was only a matter of time before this happened, but uh, this week WWE confirmed that one of their developmental talent uh, tested positive for COVID, uh, COVID-19. And so this happened at the tapings the week before. They announced it Monday right after Raw. They sent, a, they sent an announcement, or right before Raw ended, they sent an announcement to the press and the media about the positive test. It apparently happened at the tapings the week before, uh, at the NXT tapings, this talent was in the stands. Uh, and so it was there, so they decided to cancel the tapings on that Tuesday, uh, have everyone tested for COVID, and then do the tapings on Wednesday. Now that Wednesday, they hadn't gotten all the COVID test results back, so they canceled the SmackDown tapings that day. Taped a bunch of other stuff. SmackDown's going to be taped uh, this coming Friday from when people hear this. Uh, basically, either live or right before the show goes on the air. So, um, kind of surprising that it's taken this long. Because right now, you're hearing all these NFL players uh, testing positive for COVID. Uh, college uh, college football players. But the, this is the first one with the developmental talent. Yeah, and what a mess. Just in, in for the talent, just performing on that end and having to... to wrestling's hard enough as it is and with no crowd and then they're having to just jam it, it's everyone's trying to make the best of the entire situation um, with the whole corona like my thoughts on it now are, are different than when it first came out is that i think it's you got to take precautions obviously and the testing i think is is going to be a big thing but it's we've seen as this goes on and the numbers come in the the death rate is is how low that it is and specifically in in healthy people but you still got to take precautions and um i don't know man it's a tough situation and as as long as they're testing people and the talent are comfortable now um i think we just have enough information where sitting at home and not doing anything isn't the answer now after seeing that like we can't shut the world down and and, but you want to take every precaution for the talent and I feel for those guys and girls down there having to uh, be there all day and not really probably for who knows how many days at a time and the travel schedules all probably jacked up and having to be at the, at the building all day. And if it's hot and humid out, they have to wait outside. I don't know of what, you know, I'm sure there's specific things in place. And then you get a test like that. I mean, people are going to test positive now. It's like the, it's like the news Like people get sick all the time, right? You can't, it's just a, it's a part of life. You get sick and you get over it. So I don't I don't know. My views on this have changed a little as it's gone on. Whereas like at first I thought we needed to understand while everyone was home, I was against wrestling going on just for the fact that out of everything in the world, wrestling was the one thing that just got a pass on it. But now seeing where the way everything has gone, I would like to see the shows moving forward and stuff. But it just you got the testing needs to be in place to. Yeah. And there are disputed uh, uh, disputed reports on whether WWE. So this last week, w, you know, last couple of weeks they've been having fans. Oh no, this it was actually this past week that was the first time these weeks just. Didn't I like recommend that a few weeks ago, Rush? <laughs> I believe so. Is they're they're taking our suggestions. To this podcast again. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, they they had fans in the stands. Some of them were friends and family of the talent. Uh, others were, um, you know, just diehard fans that were local. 
they had them do the temperature checks. And this was on Monday. They did temperature checks, and then they also had them sign a waiver. Uh, the talent didn't know that there were going to be fans in the stand. Like a lot of them didn't know until while they were wrestling, and they looked in the crowd and saw old people and realized that hey, they got fans in the stands, and you know, and just weren't happy with the lack of communication between WWE and the talent. Uh, the, so after they had fans, uh, the doctor after the positive COVID test as well, WWE Associate Medical Director Jeffrey Dugas said, a developmental talent who was last on site at WWE's training facility on Tuesday, June 9th has tested positive for COVID-19. Since that time, no other individuals that attended the facility have reported symptoms. However, out of, out of an abundance of caution and to ensure the health and safety of the company's performers and staff, all talent, production crew, and employees on site at the training and production facilities will be tested for COVID-19 immediately. Following the test results, WWE plans to proceed with its normal pro television production schedule. So up until that point, not one person, WWE had not tested one person for COVID-19. So this developmental talent, uh, from what we're hearing, actually went out on their own, like felt symptoms, went out on their own and got their own test done, and then alerted WWE of the positive test result. And now they're doing actual COVID-19 testing. And AEW, they've been doing actual COVID-19 testing. This is the first time that WWE is doing it. And that's what we talked about a month ago, I said, because they, they said they were taking temperatures. Right. And the lack of communication is par for the course. That is, that is, and that won't change until a new company buys them out. That's just the way that it is. That comes from, from Vince and Hunter down. That's just the way that they are. That's the way, and they've gotten way too big. And um, if you know, if you're there as a talent, you know, you know, and fans don't understand. But if you're there, you know, like as far as the way things operate. And it sucks, you know, especially certain people if they're around, they have family members that, that are susceptible to this. You don't want to be around other people anymore. You know what I mean? And I, I, I can understand the talent's frustrations on that. It's, it's crazy. The guy had to go get his own, a developmental talent had to go get his own coronavirus virus test. And if he hadn't, he would have been at the tapings all day around everybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which could cause a ma mass outbreak on it now. How serious is that? These are some of the questions as we go. And I saw some uh, reporters doing it as well, because now that the riot and everything is kind of calmed down, they're like, bring back Corona, bring back Corona, wave two. And like, let's talk about it that, you know, they said something like, what if an NFL player, you know, tests positive? What happens? What's the there's a lot of unanswered questions as far as because we're not treating this. It's not like if somebody gets the flu, you go home for a week or two and you, you're back or you try to fight through it where if you get this, they want you to, to be away from people. And so it's just, yeah, I, I can't imagine. On all accounts, and, and even WWE, as much as I fucking hate them on so many things, it, it's a tough position to be in business-wise with them as well. Yeah, and Triple H was asked about not testing for COVID before. He said that the reason that they didn't was because they had received, you know, they'd been hearing that the tests weren't that accurate. Uh, still going to be more accurate than just temperature checks, though. Uh, Kevin Owens decided to skip the, the tapings uh, last week after the COVID-19 positive test. Uh, he apparently, his wife's grandfather passed away within the last couple of weeks due to COVID-19. And so his family was obviously concerned about him working in the building where someone had just tested positive for the disease. So Owens, uh, yeah. Owens refusing to work under those conditions for now, but he's expected back probably at the next set of tapings. Yeah, no, it's understandable. Let's don't know. Nope. Don't blame them one bit. Yeah. Uh, also this week, um, we had, sorry, one second. Let me find it. I'm forgetting the name of the hashtag. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, accusations uh, towards, originally it was towards NXT UK talents and David Starr regarding uh, sexual assault and uh, misconduct. And it prompted a lot of people to come out on social media and speak out. The hashtag speaking out movement uh, happened and you had just dozens of women coming out, telling their stories and implicating uh, a lot of talent within all the promotions between WWE, AEW, uh, Impact, ROH and NWA uh, executive uh, wrestling legends. Uh, WWE, one of the stars accused was Jordan 
Devlin, uh, who's in NXT UK and WWE, issued a statement on that saying that they take any allegations of this nature very seriously and are looking into the matter. A woman accused him of abusing her and posted photos on her Twitter of bruises on her body, which she alleged were caused by Devlin. And then she had since deleted it and said that she was just, uh, it, it, because she deleted it doesn't you know, mean that she, she, it still means that she's telling the truth, but she's obviously very worried of, with, uh, with the backlash that she's getting. Yeah, so that was where that all started was from her. But that the first the one was David Starr. Uh, yeah, a, a woman accused him of uh, his, uh, David Starr of sexually assaulting and abusing her. Uh, Starr denied the accusations, but he did say he denied that he was a sexual predator. But he did admit that he was an awful partner. And then at the end, he said, "If this is the end of wrestling for him, it's fine." But he added, "No matter what I say, I'm the bad guy. No pity party. It is what it is." So it started with that, and then it prompted uh, a lot of other women to come out. So it's, it definitely started with David Starr. Jordan Devlin is the first one that WWE actually issued a statement on. Yeah. Again, I don't have any. I wouldn't uh, know about any of this, and I don't want to give an opinion on anything. I just know that the. To me, the only concerning thing is when I hear like a hashtag thing, like it's trendy. That's let's hashtag speaking out like that with that. In either way towards men or women, like that's you got to be if you're going to go down that road. I mean, there's going to be good and bad and extended. I'm sure there's some situations that are probably very accurate. And then I bet you there's some other ones that start coming out that, that maybe it's just people looking for attention too. I don't know. There's always good and bad mixed in with things. Like it, we've seen it, like the riots and you see videos that are taken out of context and where people, I just get, I hate social media stuff that to get trending. And, and again, I don't know. And again, anybody, I have no opinion on it because I can't, I just, if you're going to make accusations on people, that's a very serious thing. And I, I hope I hope they're 100 percent true if, if for the for the people involved that do it that are you know if they're gonna take that leap I just don't I don't know man I just stay I, I kind of stay away from all that it's it doesn't involve me and I don't I don't I don't want to be involved in it <laughs> right. yeah yeah it's uh, shows an ugly side of uh, of the industry but. Uh... Uh, it's hard, yeah, it's, I mean, but it's we, a lot of it's rumors and stuff too with people. Not and but what it does is with people, you don't we don't know when people we who's to say what's true and what's not true. If some of these people are dating too and things like I mean, kind of like that's right. Some of the stuff you're walking on a fine line here, and it, it's just I just stay, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm big, and this is just me, Raj. I hate it, and I and I've dealt with it on my own. I hate the victim mentality and I on fucking all areas of life. I just think it's not, I think self accountability is the way to go forward. And that's not to say in particular to be insensitive to anything with anyone. But when we talk about victim things, we find more reasons to be a victim over other things. And it's not, I don't know what's true, what's not true. And I don't think it's social media is the place to let, to let a bunch of fans decide that either. So. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, hopefully with this, uh, that when uh, incidents like this do happen, that people will contact the authorities and yeah. feel, more, feel more open to do so. Well, that's the thing. Again, self-accountability is taking action. And it's not putting blame on social media or putting things out on social media necessarily. That's not – how is that going to give you – I just don't – and this isn't – I don't know. There's no right or wrong in any of this. Nothing has been proven with anyone. I don't know. All I know is like a lot of damage can be done. And we've seen it in the past where people have said things that weren't true. We saw it with Enzo, with that whole thing, that damaged that guy with a lot of that that ended up not being anything. Like, and it, But do you hear that retraction? No, it's like, and I'm not there again. I just know from what certain things and seeing, I just stay away from it. Let the people, that's why Twitter, I, it's the one place I just put my stuff out and try not to get caught up in all the other, what, what other people are saying on there. Cause not my thing. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about some wrestling now? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk wrestling. This is, 
<laughs> yeah, diseases and on things that no one that it's in three weeks could be completely gone. So, <laughs> all right. So WWE they quietly have switched uh, a couple of talents. It, it, Mustafa Ali was on SmackDown. Appears to be going to Raw. They had been doing months of this build of this mysterious SmackDown hacker. It almost appears to have been dropped because uh, they haven't done anything with it in a few weeks. A lot of people thought it was a new gimmick for Ali. Now Ali's going to Raw. And on the flip side, it looks like uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler is going to... Oh my gosh, where is that? He's going to it. Raw. I just saw that. Yeah, he's going to so Raw. Well. So yeah, they're both moving to Raw. And AJ, AJ Styles is on SmackDown again. So AJ moved to SmackDown because he had issues with Paul Heyman back when Paul Heyman was still in charge. Uh, AJ apparently uh, blamed Heyman for Gallows and Anderson uh, being fired from the company, even though it was really? ultimately a Vince call. I think AJ thought that maybe Heyman could have fought for them more, but uh, AJ was not happy with Heyman, got moved to SmackDown, and uh, in return, Raw gets Ali and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, no, it's uh, I saw that some of the AJ stuff and uh, just crazy. I don't know. The uh, Ali haven't really, has he been on TV a lot this year? No. No, no, I can't, uh, I can't even think of the last time he was on TV. And you know what this guy, he's, he speaks out pretty openly. I know on things too, right? Kind of like he's pretty, and he's an intelligent guy. He's a former cop and like, but I, I feel like a guy like that, doesn't fit into the system because they he he seems he because he seems very intelligent they don't like that usually yeah. I mean, just from different things because he's he's educated on the way things go and he he sees things for how they are and i'm sure that that because i haven't seen him a lot this year actually to your point he hasn't been on wwe television yet this year which is crazy because he was at last year at one point, was I mean, he was doing some stuff and he was basically in that Kofi Kingston spot last year. Yeah, uh, when he got injured, then Kofi, you know, and Kofi caught on fire and ended up uh, being in probably the the hottest match at WrestleMania that year yeah. with Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's uh, and that was about that was over a little over a year ago with all that. Right, but it's crazy how, how things can change. But I know. And you've heard like guys like Arn Anderson and people talk about it, and be, like and, and Jim Ross has said it's like even if you have it figured out, do you really have it figured out? Like as far as when you talk about things, and I don't know if he talk he doesn't talk necessarily about like business things, as far as the industry. Maybe he has. I don't. I haven't particularly seen it, but he he speaks on like things going on, which he's very. It, it's good, and but yeah. they they sometimes don't like that. Others so because there's always a reason why something's going on. If there's a guy not on TV, like there's always a reason. Always, yeah. um, I like Dolph going back to Raw. I think he, he's um, Dolph, man. He's since he's been there, uh, he's uh, it's like the Miz, like those, like they not out with injuries, really, just very consistent. It's, he's always able to be plugged in. Um, better heel than babyface, I think. Even though I think he does make a great babyface, I just, I if he's losing, I like him better as a heel to protect him a little more. On that, so I'm sure he can. Uh, he'll be used as he always is uh, in a, in a prominent way with people. He, he did the whole run with Otis. I thought he he helped make Otis did a, a hell of a job with all of that. And Otis is a bigger star after working with Dolph. So I'm sure you know, no matter what he's asked, he's gonna he's gonna keep doing what he's done, and that's deliver night in and night out over on Raw, and hopefully it's with fans eventually because this stuff is. I can't watch too much more of this shit, Raj. <laughs> it is tough. I mean, I've, I would, I probably wouldn't be watching if this wasn't my job. I mean, I could definitely, I, I could definitely say I wouldn't be watching it if it wasn't my job. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I've been watching for thirty years now. Uh, that being said, I did find Raw this past Monday to be their best show that they've done in a long time. It was it, lately one of the problems with Raw is that they have so many matches that go like forty minutes between guys you you don't really care for yet that aren't over. Uh, that are just newly being p pushed. I thought Monday's Raw was a lot faster paced. The matches were kept shorter, except for the bigger ones. Uh, you know, the Asuka versus Nia Jax and, and then the Drew McIntyre match were, were given more time. And that's why I always felt like works. And then a lot more segments, a lot more entertainment. 
and the show moved faster, and it did its best rating uh, since WrestleMania, since the post-WrestleMania show, uh, doing 1.939 million viewers, up 12% from last week. Now, last week did 1.737 million viewers for the Backlash Go Home episode, and it's been hovering around around that 1.7 million mark. Yeah. So this was a big jump. Uh, now, most of those viewers uh, where they saw the jump were teenage girls and also uh, people over 50, but still uh, an increase in viewership. All the other demos were even or up a little bit. And also, the hour one to hour three drop was one of the smallest in a while. Uh, it was a 7.3% drop from hour one to hour three, which was the smallest since March 9th, which was before the pandemic. Uh, the audience was down 13% from the same point last year. Usually, uh, the audience has been down like 20 to 30%. So overall, uh, all good numbers for this week's Raw. I mean, again, it's one week. They're still below 2 million, but any number up is, is a plus. Absolutely. And again, more people in the crowd. The more, the, probably the most fans they've had, they had fans in there to give you a little bit of that energy to where the, the, the wrestlers don't look like they're playing hokey wrestlers in front of nobody. So, and the more people that I would, I would say the more people they're able to keep getting in, the better things will continue to be. Um, yeah. Ratings. And these were, and to your point, these were legit fans there yeah. this week, as opposed to the, the other weeks they've had the developmental talent in the stands. And that just, it didn't feel organic. It just felt very forced. Like they were paid to, like they had a sign telling them who to cheer and who to, who to boo. Yeah, no, that's, well, that's exactly what it was. And it's understandable because you want them to, it's, if you tell them not to do anything, they're not going to, you know? So it's, uh, it's just a tough situation. I had Stu Bennett, Wade Barrett on, uh, for this, this show this week, uh, with his new movie, um, I am Vengeance Retaliation now. And uh, he, he was even saying he can't watch as far as regularly because it, without the fans and that energy. So putting some real fans in there, even if you have them, I'm sure you're telling them, please make noise, guys. To You want some energetic people in there. But at least you're getting some authentic, possibly authentic reactions. And if not, it's at the very least, the wrestlers, the, the guys and girls coming down the stage, see people they don't know so they're performing again in front of an audience essentially and outside of their peers and i think that energy is able to, to help out and the ratings clearly sh showed that you know a 12 percent increase is, is a 12 percent increase and hopefully get the numbers back into the twos here as, as this progresses yeah, and obviously a, a big part of that was christian coming back they did a, yeah. a show long angle with christian randy orton uh, you know, two total pros. Edge, uh, he had the, you know, wrestled the, the build as the greatest match of all time against Randy Orton, which was, it was really damn good. It would have been even better with uh, with the crowd. I actually thought it was a great match. And if it was in front of an audience, it, it, it would have been fantastic, just that much better. Um, but Edge got injured. Uh, they had taped that match and they taped the whole thing. Edge was fine. And then they reshot some of the, the spots in the match. And it was when they were reshooting those spots, Edge suffered a torn triceps. And uh, there's a tear on his right arm uh, while doing the retakes. And he had surgery actually right before the match aired. So he's going to be out for a while. That's, that's unfortunate. And, they, they, and Edge, I talked to him there a couple times before he went back. We are just talking about stem cells and stuff. And uh, hopefully he makes a trip down there after you get that surgery because the stem cells will, will help rapidly increase the recovery time on all that. But it's unfortunate just recording like that multiple takes after you go to your match. And, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I personally would not want to do that. I wouldn't want anything to do with that at all. I want to go do my match and I want to I get the fuck out. Um, because it's that's what can happen with that. So that's, uh, but I saw Christian back in, I, you know, I, I love both those guys, Edge and Christian, of nothing but just such great guys. And uh, Christian, he's, uh, I hope he's able to come back and do something because the way both those guys kind of had the end of their careers, Christian went forever without getting injured and then just started getting injured towards the end of his career. And uh, some, I think, taking some time away, we'll see. Uh, how, how he's doing with everything, but I've always enjoyed him. We always have a running 
he heard my last name once and it was uh because my last name is reeves so whenever we see each other because he, he, he'd someone said like something reeves to him and he goes who the fuck is reeves <laughs> <laughs> so that's always the thing he whenever he's he goes who the fuck is reeves and uh he's uh, i like him a lot man i'm i'm happy to see him back and today it's funny with Randy, man, Randy should just stay that in that spot. Just keep working all the guys from his generation that know how to work. <laughs> <It> still works. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the most interesting thing on, on the thing. So right. you tell me what style's better. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Orton, you know, he's spoken out. We, we talked about last week. He made the leg slap comments about Tommaso yeah. Ciampa. Uh, he, he's been doing media. Uh, and, he, you know, he said... Uh, he respects these guys in NXT, but they're not making real money right now and they're killing themselves. And if they get injured, they're out. They never made any real money as opposed to if you work smarter, you come to the main roster, um, then you make your money and, and, and you pick your spots and, and, and work safer and smarter. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to fault that advice. That's what the business always was. That's, and I think that that was lost at some point in this newer generation but it's not lost because what happens is a lot of guys that do come up there. See, the difference, Raj, is, is when you're working down in NXT and, that, and then you go and you start doing five nights a week. Five nights a week in four or five nights. That's what it always was. And maybe that's going to alter a little bit. But then all of a sudden you try to, to just work that style constantly. You see it all the time. Guys adjust real, within a matter of weeks. You'll see guys adjust really quickly. And then they learn how to work. They learn because they're forced to, because they realize that that spot that they're in and that that their money that money that they're making isn't that they're not going to be able to sustain that. And the smart ones figure it out. And Randy's just doing nothing but helping those guys out, giving them giving them golden advice on that. And it's always you always want. It's not the stuff that they're doing. It's the throwing away of the registering and the selling. That if you in 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 the lack of mannerisms and, and character and storytelling while in the ring, that if you just don't throw away all the other parts of wrestling, that is what makes wrestling. And then you still do your stuff in there at the right places. You'll be an even bigger star. And he's given them nothing but free great advice that each and every one of them should take. Yeah, absolutely. I always think back to Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at WrestleMania. They're kicking out of each other's finishers, but that's because no one ever kicks out of them before. So that's why it matters. Now, you're constantly kicking out of finishers. You're constantly killing the guy they kick out of two and make a surprise face. So you're giving, and, sometimes you, yeah. you're doing too much. People see too much and uh, it just numbs you. And by the way, psychology wise for that, that's those two. They went in their entire careers in, in different things storytelling with the finishers and the finishers being built up and on the biggest show one time of the year. And then what happened is in independent wrestlers and people, that's fucking badass. We want to do that every night on every show. And that's where that trend started, essentially, on a more mainstream level, because people started duplicating that, replicating that in regular everyday matches. And that's the thing. It's knowing when and where to do that, and not everyone should go do that. And that's, again... My thing is, is I'm never going to stop what people are going to do. You just have to know it and then go and, and take care of it yourself. And But when the whole industry starts becoming that and then they're letting it become, that's where then all of a sudden you see a decline in things. And so that's where you want to see the guys get more educated on the matter. And uh, because everyone will make more money, the more educated everybody is. Yeah. Uh, in other ratings news, uh, WWE Backstage, they actually did their best number, uh, their second best ne number ever. It had Bret Hart on the show, also CM Punk was on. Uh, 175,000 viewers, uh, up 56% from last week. Now, obviously wow. shows with fewer viewers, like if you have 90,000, you jump to 120,000, that percentage sounds impressive. Still not many viewers, but it's still, uh, you know, for, for that show, it's a very good number for what they've been doing. And I think that, again... You, whenever you do something and you see a, a bump like that, and you know, because CM Punk, he had that, it, the he helped out initially there, and then that kind of lost its luster over when he's by himself. You know, maybe it, it's putting those interesting interactions on the show. You have Bret Hart and CM Punk on the same show, right? That's interesting because you want to see how they're going to interact with each other. So I think that that's a 
a nice little formula of uh, not to say that it's always going to work, but if I'm if I'm there and I'm, I'm a producer, I go, OK, well, let's see if it's if it's Brett. Let's try Brett by himself next week and see. And then it's probably not going to have the, the, the same impact. It's, it's putting two guys that people want to see interact. So because both those guys are great as far as that and having their own audiences. So that's good for the show that you I mean, no matter what you want. Even though it's on a horrible night and time slot, you want as many people still watching. Right. Uh, absolutely. And the the good ratings continued, uh, at least uh, relatively for the, the COVID-19 era. Uh, AEW and NXT both this week, they did their best numbers in a long time. Uh, they were both up this week. No competition. There was no NASCAR like there was last week. Uh, there have been some weeks with UFC. Uh, they, there was basically like no competition on the night. And it's uh, AEW Dynamite still top NXT. Um Dynamite did uh, 772,000 viewers. NXT did 746,000 viewers. So it beat it by only 3.5%. So still on the smaller uh, margin of how it's been beating the show in the past. But still uh, still a win. Uh, AEW was up. Uh, they were up 14% from last week. NXT was up 11% from last week. So both seeing good increases. And in the 1849 demo, AEW was up 22%, while NXT was up 25% in that demo. AEW still beating NXT in the demo uh, with a 0.28 to a 0.20. So, again, uh, these numbers for AEW, it was their best number uh, since before the pandemic, I believe. Let me double check that. Uh, 772. So, it was their best number since the March 25th episode. So, that was the first empty, empty crowd show. NXT was their best number uh, since February, so uh, or since actually since March, since uh, March fourth. So okay, or sorry, February nineteenth. I'm I'm looking at the demo, but yeah, February nineteenth. So both shows doing well this week. Yeah, and I watched uh, a, a quite a bit of AEW, and uh, again, I think that's uh, especially with them and the. I would just like I can't wait for the crowd to be back. I think with everything going on and. Uh, um, they're staying on top with everything with, with NXT. I think with getting those crowds back, that, that those two shows become then. That's the night I'm really curious on those ratings, how they continue to progress. And, and if AEW continues to climb, everything's kind of on hold, I feel like, with this virus. We're not going to see like a breakout rating, regardless of what anyone does on TV. And I don't think that's going to change until the crowd is back. Um, but I did see... Uh, in relation to this i saw something with chris jericho talking about how they're like not just going to take any like all the wwe names that were released i know he'd mentioned he goes well we're not interested in any of them um with the current crop of releases and i I guess outside of like ftr because those they were involved in that and i don't know if he's he goes by i wouldn't be surprised if one or two or something pops up or ends up here and i i can only imagine a guy like rusev i think would have to be top priority on getting him uh, into that system. Because I know Chris had mentioned something like a Roman Reigns he thinks would thrive over there, which Roman would. Roman, Roman's top-notch and uh, a great worker, and as Rusev is, and Rusev has a character and a built-in brand that uh, I think can give them a little boost in, in everything, specifically the ratings. And I think, it, and I don't know, with Chris, and he talks about like WCW and, and that stuff of bringing in past guys, and I do think you have to be careful on that, on how many... Guys, but I also think that era was different with guys making money and not being hungry and guys getting older and coming in. I think it all, I look at things, I think from a business standpoint, you have to look at a case by case basis and look at a brand, look at a guy, look at his following and you go, can we, can this, can this guy benefit us? Can we benefit him? Is this a good pairing? And it's mindset and it's an individual performer thing. And I don't think you should, it's good to group anybody as a whole no matter what, because I do truly think AEW, and I love what they're doing with guys, but they they would do nothing but benefit by getting the right people added into that roster as they continue to go along. And I think Rusev's going to be one of them. I really, really do with that. And that's going to help them. You know, you bring a guy like Rusev that has a, a millions of followers on social media, and say you're going to get a small percentage of that. Maybe you get, maybe you only get maybe you get 30,000 people that are watching that weren't watching before. That's 30,000 more people that are watching though with that guy. And maybe it's higher than, maybe it's much higher than that. I don't know, but you got to look at it like that where you could get new eyes, 
And those new eyes will then become fans of the guys that you have and become familiar with them. And so, and you just continue to build, but um, because I think AEW has the potential to surpass WWE in time in the ratings and, and the Raw and SmackDown side of things. Um, and they're just so early on. So we just got to kind of wait and see, but um, they're, they're staying, they're staying on top for the time being. Yeah, absolutely. Uh and they're still signing new talent. We've seen the Revival uh, recently debut. And then former NWA champion Ricky Starks, he made his debut on Dynamite. Uh, I thought he looked great. Uh, he's got that kind of natural smugness, great heel uh, aspect to him. Uh, so he appeared as a uh, surprise opponent for Cody in the Open, uh, open Challenge. Uh, had a good match with him. Cody beat him. Um, that's one, I don't know, I wouldn't have someone beat their first night out. But then again, Starks was not signed yet. He was legitimately... Uh, given a contract after the show was over, and he signed with AEW. So Ricky yeah. Starks now with them. Um, so a couple things on that. Ricky was actually a local um, that I did, in, I believe, in Laredo, Texas, where I was doing the bullying stuff, and um, where uh, I walked into catering, and he was making a sand, a tuna fish sandwich, and uh, I, I said, "What'd you say to me?" And, and and he didn't say anything. And against the wall, and I remember I had to slap him with a. A thing of tuna fish and the tuna got like in his ear it, 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 like it, it all over his face it, it's hilarious with that but he was such a he i just remember he was a really cool guy and uh i ended up ran into him he came to, to the gym i go to here in vegas a couple of years ago when i was all messed up and uh i don't know if he was here for a show i i think it was something along the lines of being here for a show and we just got to talking about stuff and uh we were talking about, I remember we were talking about conditioning and burpees and how much those helped me with everything. But he, man, and he's just busted his ass ever since from the first time I've met him. And finally, you know, you keep busting your ass. Not to say that it, it's always going to work out, but this is a case where uh, it ended up getting an opportunity. I thought he looked very good as well on there. And uh, congratulations to him uh, as his career gets going and getting, may, hopefully, makes some money now doing everything and, and busting his ass. Uh, I like what Cody's doing, and the reason why, Cody's a very smart guy. He keeps himself in a prominent position on TV, and while not having to be AEW talent at the time, it's essentially, it creates, a, there's multiple reasons why this is good. It gives Cody a secure spot on TV where he essentially can go out and have classic wrestling matches with up-and-coming talent, and they get the rub from, so that's where it's okay with guys coming in and because they're losing to Cody. For the for the TNT title for something they're not even on TV yet, so and they're going out and being highly competitive against one of the main guys on the AEW roster, uh, which Cody continues to come out on top. And you could do this for you could do this for a year, which he should. You should do this as long as he possibly can because eventually, when the right guy comes in, you have a major major angle right away with it. But he. Um, it's, it's beneficial for Cody because it's allowing Cody to go out there and to showcase his abilities that he's he's a good worker. and Because there's a lot of people, and I know with, they, with the social media, all these the online negative fans, everybody gets shit. Everybody sucks. Everybody, we all deal with the same stuff. It's just from different groups of people with it and stuff. And uh, so he gets to go out there and kind of throw, you know, fuck you guys and do that. And I like it all the way around. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Tony Khan was, has been very, uh, active on Twitter this week. Uh, he, uh, this past week, he's usually not, he usually doesn't answer too many, uh, wrestling related tweets, but he started with, you know, uh, announcing that Ricky Starks is now with AEW. He signed him. Uh, they were impressed. He, they, he said that, uh, Tony, I mean, uh, Tony said that Ricky opened a lot of eyes. So after that, um, he, Dave Meltzer, uh, was talking about how someone sent him a tweet saying, I really shouldn't have watched New Japan immediately before AEW Dynamite. New Japan is back. Uh, they're doing empty arena shows. So Dave Meltzer pointing, make, basically making the point, he said, I never watched New Japan Pro Wrestling right before any other promotion. Always watch it last. I have that rule for a reason. Watch New Japan Pro Wrestling and everything after looks way too contrived in comparison. Tony Khan replied to that and said, we've tried to set a standard by frequently opening with great matches we believe can stand up beside whatever you watch prior, like Kenny versus Pac, Nick versus Phoenix, and many others. 
I enjoyed the opening tag tonight too. Watch whatever you want before Dynamite. I'll take my chances. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I would just block him. I don't think Meltzer's <laughs> opinion. I really don't. It's not even worth the guy's poison. To, and it's, he's good with numbers and good with facts, but when he has to leave his opinions, he's allowed to have his opinion. I, I don't. Listen, I just block. He's he's not relevant to me in anything. And I want it. You know, Tony is a smart guy. I want it to play to that guy because playing what happened with wrestling today is playing to some of that guy's thoughts. And we are seeing what's happened with that. And I would argue great matches, great matches can't happen unless they're in front of a crowd. What's the greatest match. Most people say the, the modern era anyways, rock Hogan, probably at WrestleMania, right? Yeah. Rock Hogan, Sean versus taker. Also super hot crowd. Yeah. Hot yeah. crowd. That's what makes a great wrestling match. It's not the moves that you do. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, the, that plays a part, but it needs to be done in front of a crowd. It's not so. Um, I, I just I saw with Tony with that. It, it, it's a no one situation, and with everyone, like we said, gets it. There's people that are criticizing him. You, your dad, that he's his dad is a billionaire. In that, yeah. don't we all wish our dad were billionaires? <laughs> Yeah, I was, just would, about to, I was just about to get the, uh, those as well. But yeah, yeah, well, read them because well, that that boggles my mind that, that people. This is you should be inspired by this, right? So, so real quick, first, uh, Tony Khan said that he had signed Ricky Starks. Someone gave him crap for saying I signed, not we signed. Be aware of what you're watching. Yes, it's a great product. Yes, it's better than WWE Morley, but it is not the same as All In. Uh, be aware of what you are watching for the wrestlers by the wrestlers. It is not. And Tony Khan replied, we never said it's the same product. I'm transparent on how we work. We have a great group of executives in leadership roles. Many are star wrestlers and I work closely with them and I'm accessible for all staff and wrestlers. This isn't a public company. I'm in a hundred control, a hundred percent control of everything. Yes. And then, um, to your point, when they said, someone said, does your father give you your allowance before or after the shows when you play wrestling? Tony Khan replied, he gave me a big check to start the company. I knew we'd have to make a big investment in the business. It was a leap of faith on his part, and it was rewarded when we earned a multi-year TV contract worth over $175 million. Thank you for your response. It made me even prouder of what we've done. So a great yeah. response. Absolutely. And the thing is with that, it's just people like that. It's just blocking them. Really, th th those people don't have... Those people are always going to be negative and criticized because it's a reflection of their lives and where they're at. And they're going to be that way the majority until the day they die, most likely. And there's a plethora factory line of them with that. He's uh, how the it always I always kind of it, it's just when someone says like, oh, you're, you know, your dad or you come from money or it was like. We all would love to come from money. And by the way, they face their own challenges that people that don't have money don't have to face on a whole other level. There's everyone has their own unique story and, and situation. And um, and regardless of that, they were able to get a major TV deal and and become profitable or on the path to becoming profitable very early on from a business standpoint. And um, that's no easy task, let alone in the wrestling industry. And again, with, from the company they were with All In, you have to understand they're evolving and they're very open-minded. Of course, they're not the same company. They're now a television product, which is an entirely different. When you have, you have to make decisions that are very wise for TV and, and for being profitable and continuing to be profitable. And those people, you think that it, the, and I've just learned this with those people, you just got to block them out. It's a no-win situation. There's nothing. They're not. They only understand from their own level of perception, which is very low. And it's never going to be. Even when they're wrong, they think they're right. It's that two plus two equals ten crowd. Just you got to tell them enjoy, enjoy. Two plus two is ten. Bye, and let them go. I do think one thing that a lot of people don't realize as well is you have to get fans out of the wrestling bubble. And, and to do that, you know, you, you got to get away from the independent wrestling vibe. And I think some fans are angry about that. Uh, you know, they're giving AEW crap that, you know, they're trying to be a more main, a little more mainstream product. I don't think they've gone all the way there yet, but at some point you got to break, break out of the wrestling bubble if you're going to bring new fans in. So, and you should want that because the wrestlers are making more money 
it makes better competition. They are creating a product competing against WWE, whether they like it or not, whether that was the intention or not. That's what it is. So you are dealing with a big dog that has just uh, so many things at their disposal that you, you need to you need to really really fine tune your product. And I think they've done a great job with the. Like, I think they have a better presentation than NXT with all of that. I think with Raw and SmackDown right now, they're doing a better job with that on that. And there's things that they they can continue to improve, and they're going to. So. Yeah can't get caught up in that negative portion they just got i told they look just look at the numbers and the money and, and like that's in the, i'm telling you and grow that grow that number and you're doing everything right absolutely well uh another action-packed week uh <laughs> as as it always seems to be there's not really a week off so uh thanks again for having me on likewise roger anything to plug to wrap up this week uh, yeah, I know you had Stu Bennett on. Uh, we uh, actually also had an interview with Stu Bennett uh, this week. Also, uh, Jimmy Corderas just talking about uh, uh, a lot of the happenings today in wrestling. QT Marshall from AEW, Ty Valkyrie, uh, uh, King Mo, Wade Boggs, I had mentioned before, uh, talks about his relationship with Mr. Perfect. All these exclusive interviews at WrestlingInc.com, as well as the latest wrestling news. Uh, just tons of updates. It's been an insane year so far, but keep checking out WrestlingInc.com. Good deal, Raj. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for listening. You've just listened to the Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report. Feed me more. Yo, thank you guys for watching Ryback TV. If you could check out my Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report every Monday on all podcast platforms, conversation with the big guy Ryback every Thursday morning on all podcast platforms, and Feed Me More Nutrition, my personal supplement line, available on feedmemore.com and Amazon. Save 10% with discount code YouTube10 and save stupid why couldn't you almost had it i almost had the whole video done in one take ah. new customers you can save 20 percent with discount code new customer on feedmemore.com get hungry stay hungry feed me more